we're finally back with another packed episode. This time we're taking a look at what's inside our Funk Street day pack for daily commuting. There's a lot to cover. As always, we'll have links in the description below. So let's jump right in. This is Sergio AM. Welcome to It Came From A Box. So first up, the bag. This is Funk Street's day pack. They were kind enough to send one our way a few months ago, and it's a blacked out utilitarian looking bag that's stealthy in a crowd, but up close, similar to the commuter pack, you'll notice a lot of attention to detail. It's got that same honeycomb ripstop along with durable weather resistant materials throughout, including the bottom, so you don't have to worry so much when setting it down. But this time around, although the exterior is quiet and designed, it's loud on the inside with this striking, colorful, uh, yet saturated looking camo lining that really stands out and definitely draws some eyes. You can carry it by the long handles at the top, the included padded shoulder strap, or attach it to your luggage with the straps on the back. It has four compartments made up of two pockets on the front, one padded 16 inch laptop compartment on the back, and a large main compartment down the middle. That capacity makes it a solid weekender bag to travel with, but as we do, it's also great for daily commuting. So starting off the sides, there's four loops that I'm using for, a lens pen to keep my camera lens dust free. Then I have this incredibly handy retractable hand sanitizer bottle by Orbit Key to keep my hands clean. And I also had an expensive pen here, but I'm sure the last person I lent it to uh, kept it. On the front, we have two quick access pockets secured by these fiddle locks, which unlike some of my other bags actually works because of this extended flap, which allows the magnets to lock in every single time. In pocket number one, I have the 10th gen Kindle Paperwhite, but this time dressed in this slick blue fabric cover. As I previously mentioned, uh, it's got insane battery life, it's waterproof for those long showers, and has Bluetooth to use with audiobooks. I went with the higher capacity 32 gig version because I read a lot of graphic novels which take up space. Currently I just read through some more Junji Ito and yes I'm seeing spirals all around and I just started the massive fourth Walking Dead compendium. Now the best part is that it all syncs on the cloud so when I get home I can then continue where I left off on my Oasis. In the second pocket I have my Retroid Pocket 2 in matte black. I can easily spend an entire episode talking about it, but to keep it short, it's a well-made handheld that you can set up to emulate a ton of retro consoles, which I primarily use as a Pocket N64 to relive my childhood. I'm currently playing through Bomberman 64, which is one of my all-time favorites, and next up I'll tackle Gauntlet Legends. Overall, it's a great handheld for emulation, but it does take some time to set up, and it's also a, a huge fingerprint magnet. Now back here, we have that dedicated padded 16-inch laptop compartment lined with micro suede on one side. Very, very soft. In here, until a new version is released, I'm still carrying the reliable Chromebook Go because it's very lightweight, fast and responsive, and has great battery life. It's my go-to for researching, planning, and scripting out these videos. Plus, it's awesome for cloud gaming with that amazing screen. But if I'm working on video or graphics, I'll swap it out with my Razer Blade 15. Over at the top, to get into the main compartment, we have two water-resistant zippers attached together by this handle so you can open it with one hand. Very smooth, works well every single time. At the end here, the flap is attached via two magnets which keeps it in place and it goes down far enough so if you're caught in the rain, it should just run off the side instead of inside the bag. And here's our large and roomy main compartment. Like the outside, in here we also have two pockets off the side. In the first, I have my Pixel 4 XL which was dethroned by the Pixel 5 so it's now pretty much a dedicated cloud gaming phone. More on that soon. On the second, we have Waterfield slipcase to carry, to the surprise of no one, my Pokemon Sword and Shield edition of the Nintendo Switch Lite, which I threw in here because, well, Monster Hunter. But I also have a massive backlog of games, all of which are held in this very tiny yet fast Lexar play card with an insane one terabyte of storage. I'm going to talk more about it in an upcoming episode, so make sure to subscribe for that. 
Then at the bottom, I have Ghoulie Kit's Root Air Bluetooth adapter, because out of all of the ones we have, this one's the most low profile, while also supporting two simultaneous connections. Now let's start off here with the Snake Bike case for my Phantom Magenta Xbox controller. Possibly one of my favorite looking colorways, love that X-ray shell, but since getting the Series X and S, this one's become my go-to controller for portable cloud gaming since it's supported by obviously Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, but also Stadia, GeForce Now, Steam Link, and you can of course use it for games on your phone. To do so, I have PowerA's MOGA adjustable phone clip. Together, these three make for an awesome handheld cloud gaming setup. Well, you know, as long as you have a decent internet connection. But honestly, this has become one of my favorite ways to play games right now. Next, to combat anxiety, I have my re-released Hornhead Mad Ball to fidget with. I actually do use this a lot and I really do love it. Now, the reason I carried lens pen is for my Fuji X100F. I can talk your ear off over it, but to keep it short, it's a mirrorless camera with a 24.3 megapixel cropped APS-C sensor, a fixed 23 millimeter f2 lens, and a lot of features with my favorites being the internal drop down three stop ND filter and their beautiful color profiles that simulate film. Throughout the last few years, I've also thrown in a few upgrades with things such as a lens hood to protect that glass, thumb and hand grips to enhance its ergonomics, as well as a fancy dancy shutter button. But yeah, when it comes to photography, this is my go-to. Wrapped around it is Topo Design's awesome camera strap in this maroon pattern. And that is connected to the camera with Peak Design's awesome quick release system. Now, if I wanna ditch the strap, I also have their capture camera clip V2 that I can attach to any strap and that connects to the camera via the quick release plate. Last thing on here is a collaboration between OrbitKey and Chipolo with their tracker, which connects to my phone. So if I ever step too far away from it, I'll get a notification warning me. And if I lose it, I can view its location and then have it ring to find it. Very useful, definitely helps with my paranoia. And I ordered another to attach it to my OrbitKey organizer. Now, because we have such a big compartment for smaller items, I like to pack modular. So in here, I have two different sized Wander tech bags. Both share the same weatherproof materials, have multiple straps for attachments, and can even be connected together. Now the large tech pouch has handles on both ends, which makes it easy to pluck out of the bag. And in here, I have everything power related. For the camera, I have this RAV Power micro USB charger that comes with two batteries. It normally lives in our charging station, but it's attached via Velcro, so I can quickly remove it and take it on the go. Next, to charge everything in this bag, I have one short micro USB cable, two short USB to USB-C cables, and one longer USB-C to USB-C cable for the laptop. As for bricks, I have two. First, to juice up the laptop and phone is RAV Power's PD Pioneer 30 watt charger with retractable prong and two ports, USB-C and USB-A. Then I have their more powerful RAV Power 65 watt charger that has two USB-C and two USB-A ports with intelligent power allocation to simultaneously fast charge just about anything I hook up as long as it's compatible. Now, if I don't have access to an outlet, on the other side of this bag, I have Aoki's 20,000 milliamp power bank with USB-A and USB-C ports and a very handy LCD display. But there's more. Over on the back, you've got a kickstand to prop it up, and that's so you can use the phone stand on the front, because yes, it can also wirelessly charge, which gives my cloud setup a tabletop mode, so to speak. And finally, in the medium pouch, which I use to dump my pocket EDC, I have my Moo Square business cards in their showcase. Then I have my Pixel Buds 2 in this Spigen case to use with all the devices in this bag. They sound great and also give me quick access to Google Assistant, which um, I use a lot. I'm, I'm pretty addicted to that. Next, to change things up, I'm carrying Olight's i5 UV flashlight in this awesome blue with pink splatter colorway. This thing is a blast to just shine around at night, but it's also very useful when paired with a UV marker to tag whatever you want so you can easily spot it at night. You have no idea how useful this can be. Also in here is what started as an April Fool's joke, but was actually made and sold. Uh, this is Waterfield's two cents case in grizzly leather, which is hilarious, but also makes for a great conversation starter. And I cannot stop sniffing it. 
As for the multi-tool, I've been carrying Leatherman's Free T4 in this very unique lunar color. As expected from Leatherman, every tool on here is well made, awesome blade too, but at the end of the day, I still miss pliers. But regardless, at this size, you get a solid tool set. Next up is the keychain, which is Waterfield's simple yet elegant blue leather key clip. On it, I have my Lucky Godzilla, never leave without it, my Orbit Key Crumpler 300D Polyester Ripstop Organizer, very durable, and I also carry their multi tool inside. And last but not least is Matador's Keychain Mask, which I carry in case I ever forget my main one, and that happens a lot. Definitely a lifesaver. So yeah, that's what's currently packed in my bag these days, but let me know what you think of it along with what's packed in yours down in the comments below and let's talk. Daily carry aside, like I said, the day pack is also a solid option for traveling or to use as a gym bag and it's currently on Kickstarter. So if you're looking to pick one up at a discounted price, check the link down in the description below. Same for everything else featured in this video. Last year was intense and I hope you're all doing well, uh, but during that we introduced a fifth member to our family, Adeline, which you saw in that one clip. And we also moved, which is uh, much more time consuming than expected. And Kate documented some of what we've been doing in the house here. So if you get a chance, check out the house tour at the end of this video or in the description below. On top of that, I also owe you guys an update I have not forgotten, and we're gonna be doing some live streams to check out all these games that are releasing. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate every single one of you. Once again, this is Sergio AM. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box.